and now, live, live on the fabulous interweb, PTR Radio. this is PTR Radio with Mike the Ape Man. Rip down my pants, look up my bottom, so and palm up. Hit us red, and don't be out of my hands. Stop, let me play with your body, baby. Make you real. <laughs> Turned around just the other day. Came to the world in the usual way. Came with the catch, the bills to pay. Learned to walk while I was away. Praise is heard, the news is in. Feel my life is going to change wide open. Why do I know all these bad songs? And now, PTR Radio. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of PTR Radio. Here on the fabulous Intel Web. One of these days, I will get around to making a new intro. But that one's so good. I mean, it's it's got everything that everyone wants, really. <laughs> I mean, pain, pleasure, humor, rock songs. Really? Lack of indictment of animals. Yes, exactly. And Colin got made fun of for a long time with indictments. Now, Mike's, it's only fair, Mike, really. Starting not to like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just starting? Oh. All right, folks. It is. Because I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that that intro, along with a, a hat that I purchased, lead, led us to the thought that, hey, he can kind of do impressions on the fly, huh? Yeah. Well, you know, you you amazed us so much last week. <laughs> All right. <laughs> with with you were just on the spot impression of an Eastern European. All right, that we just thought that we needed to take it a step further, and we always say, don't we, Mike? We want that. We want the you know audience participation. So I listened back to it. Uh huh. And I realized that essentially the voice I was doing uh -huh. was like new checkoff on crack. <laughs> I could I could say that I I would say that that's probably pretty cl pretty accurate really, um, you know and and for those that are wondering what we're talking about, I think I can probably pull it up, uh, you know, just be, because I th I think we owe it to the audience really, you know. But, but yeah. so if it's going to be a new checkoff on crack, that means that character needs to be a, needs to be scared of cars. <laughs> very scared of <laughs> yes very scared of cars so uh so if you're wondering what we're what we're talking about this is a little snippet of of mike here from last week's show competition it is like filling out the thing to be who's who in american business yes you've been recognized as a who's who in american business pay me 50 dollars to be in the national directory and you get you get a pleather covered book yeah <laughs> So, yeah, that, just a little taste, a little taste of Mr. Shathid, as we've named him. So, I think, we, I think we have to keep a catalog of these things, you know. In for the record, Mr. Shathid only afraid Jeep Grand Cherokees. <laughs> because the, the parking cheat the lever thing do not work. There we go. So, uh, clarification. Just to be safe. Yes. So, discover these two. <laughs> Apparently. Oh, mustache makes it, really. A ball mustache really makes it. Yes, but it's no good for video clipping. You can't see my lips move. Oh, you're right. It does cause a problem there. But so that, that Colin and I were, while you were doing the impression last week, Colin and I were on Amazon looking for hats. Because oh, yeah. we said, this is a thing. 
it's a wonderful thing. It's, uh, yeah, and we discovered Amazon is a wonderland of affordable novelty hats. Yes, they, they love the novelty hat. And so, if you go, it's linked up on our YouTube page. It was also on our Facebook page. But if you go, or if you even... <laughs> If you even go to PTR Radio slash Hat Wish List, um, it will take you to <laughs> it will take you to Mike the A it will take you to the wish list, which will from now on be used exclusively for the Ape Man Hat Instant Impersonation Challenge. That's what we're calling this thing, really. Yes. <laughs> And, and, and that's the best thing I could think of. Uh, the idea here, as I said in the clip, is Mike will receive a hat from this wish list from one of you great listeners. And then he will need, he will have to come up on the spot with an impersonation which matches the hat. And looking at some of the hats on that list, as I said, I, I am very concerned of what kind of uh, what kind of voice or character is going to come out of my mouth because, you know, this uh, we we typically we're not a racist show. No. And uh, I'm just afraid that some of those hats. Good leaning. I just got a message from one of from. No. This is Ape Man who's watching, watching us live, saying that uh, my participation, suddenly the camera makes it very apparent that my participation in No Shave November is not very flattering. <laughs> so. See, I have so many extra razors saved up from Dollar Shave Club that I, I'm not spending any money this month, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> you know? uh, it's, it's obviously it's it cost me sixty cents a blade, but yeah, it's just I got to a point where now I'm more than halfway, and I realize, okay, do I ride this thing out for another ten days? Yep. I don't know. So yeah, and just to say, I buy my razors from Sam's, so I pretty much have a year's supply of razors at the moment. Yeah. So let's go through some of the hats that are on the wish list. Yes. Let's that, not that I don't want it to be a surprise. How do you get the wish list again? com slash hat wish list. Hat wish list. Okay. And I think you have to put .aspx, but I will try and fix that. Since I was having trouble remembering, I figured somebody else would be. Yes. Like I said, it's been linked up on our Facebook and um, throw .aspx after that. Oh, and some of, some of these hats, please God, please God, no. So here are, here are some of the hats, which again, Mike, you know, would need to do an impression for. We have a purple velvet fedora. Because you got to keep your pimp hands strong. Uh, we have a crown. We have, Colin's suggestion, a steampunk top hat, complete with chained buckles, uh, you know, in brown or black. And that thank God that <laughs> that hat's one of the most expensive ones on the list. So the likelihood of that one being purchased. <laughs> I thought it was cheaper when I first linked it. I'm not sure uh, what happened there. Maybe my looking at it made it more. Yeah. Uh, there you go. A sombrero. A red beret. A rabbi hat. A Chinese bamboo coolie hat. A Rastafarian beret complete with dreadlocks. A bearded winter, I don't know if that is uh, 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 Duck Dynasty inspired, but regardless, hat. I could see you wearing that, Mike. <coughs> oh, I would wear it. I would wear the hell out of the, You'd have to fight me to take that off in the winter. A Viking bearded hat. A moose hat. A <laughs> twirling beanie hat. Propeller hat, uh, 
And then the Guy Fieri <laughs> spiky hair flame visor hat. For some reason I thought I actually owned already. <laughs> Where was it the octopus hat? Oh, uh, I did the Cthulhu hat. You yeah. mean? I did not know how the hell he would work that out. That's true. I, I figured it'd just be like the the bearded one. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. I have to see what it looks like on someone's head. That's the problem. Yeah. But there, there. Trust me, there is still room for lots of improvement on the list. We start to get some some purchases, and suddenly there's going to be a lot more things on the list. I guarantee. This is just a small starter, uh, you know, and as, as more things are designed, obviously, we're going to get out there. So those are those are just a few that I that I thought would that, that Colin and I thought would yeah. be good. And, and Although ba ba based on previous listener participation with anything, I have nothing to fear. Yeah, so exactly. You can put whatever the hell you want on this thing. Uh, just so you know, uh, if you want to run over to we're talking about the no, the one we're talking about, Mike. Look for Beanie Octopus. We we are getting a few suggestions though, in from listeners already. So of of additional hats to add. Which, by the way, if you have an additional hat that you want to add to the list, I couldn't make it open to the public where where they could add more to the list. You, don't but, you dare. But if you're willing to purchase the hat, that's the thing is if you're going to suggest one, uh, you you got to be a, you got to be willing uh, to uh, to you know. There's actually uh, on the list. You can go up and you can paste in a link of what you want. And click add the list, and then Shaggy will get the email and can decide yeah. to put it on or not. Yeah. <laughs> I've just decided that this listener suggestion is going on the list. Yes. It's a very oh, good listener no, suggestion. Come on, no. Nope, nope, that's going on the list. Unless, Are you kidding me right now? I can find a better one. That one is going on the list. Are you... Are you kidding me right now? No, I'm not kidding you. I never kid about hats. Hats are a very important subject. So that and and so, like I said, uh, the, you know, we want you, the listeners, to be able to contribute to the show, and that's by you know you finding a good hat that you think Mike would do be a great impressionist for. God. So with that said, that's our hat update. You know, it, it, we'll be doing checks you know, periodically to see if Mike got any hats. So I'll know because I'll get a notif. I should get a notification saying that something's been purchased from the wish list. And then Mike, so you may Mike will just get a surprise on his front door, <laughs> and he'll go. And I, I don't remember ordering anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. Okay, so we got to talk about this for a second. Yeah. Because it's not like I don't order stuff from Amazon all the time. Right. So when these boxes come with the hat, in theory, yep. I get a delivery. And it's a, it's, a, it's a hat. Okay. Yeah. Comes the week after a show. So I have, I could have 10 days to mull this over. Because yeah. obviously, I'm going to open it up. Yeah, no. That's fine. Right? Although we could change the address to say like nah. the hat PTR hat man care <laughs> of Mike <laughs> okay, no, no, that's see but that's what I'm talking about so then okay. I have to open it up on the air and come up with something on the spot I get I guess we could do that I might could do that mm -hmm. as we could do and that would make it a lot better for me because then Kimberly will know who to yell at <laughs> for buying for when boxes come and know that I did not buy anything. <laughs> I think because I'm not buying cool. hats for this. <laughs> I'm not. I can just hear it now. Where are you going to keep all these friggin' hats? Well, uh, and it's not like with this last one that was added. It's not like it just folds up and goes on a shelf. No, this thing has its own freaking zip code. Well, I think we need to add something to the list then. A hat holder. A hat stand. <laughs> Maybe something that can go in the back of your door. 
hold all these hats. And then they're that in the background. Work. That could work. So that's, that's that's got potential. But yes, I I just I just see this as a great thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, mainly because and it's not what? happening to me. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. Hey, Mike, don't think that I'm not sacrificing. If either of us were any good at coming up with voices, yeah, we, we would we would do it too. The only voice I'm good at coming up with right now is slightly in pain because this is my dedication to the show. I had to take off this afternoon because I had a dentist appointment and I'm still doing the show now. And it wasn't a minor dentist appointment, okay? I hadn't, I, again, I'm a terrible person. I hadn't been to the dentist in 10 years. I did that once. And Poor so, guy. so, <laughs> yeah, pretty, well, this is, a, this is the, this is coming to the end of the year where I start to straighten out everything that I let go wrong in my life. Uh -huh. uh, so, you know, I've lost a bunch of weight. I've got my blood pressure under control, you know, all that kind of stuff is all, and then like the teeth was the last thing. So I went there last week and um, the, the, you know, it's bad when the nurse goes, well, how long has it been? And I go, oh, a while. And she opens up and she goes, oh, you're still using our old charts. <laughs> yeah, well, not only, well, see, that's bad, but that's normally when you say, you know what? It's been so long. I'm just going to switch dentists. <laughs> well, she asked me, have you been going to anyone else? <laughs> And I said, no, I've just been a horrible patient. Well, at least you're honest. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I told him straight up. I'm like, listen, I know I've done a lot of damage. I know I'm not a good patient, and I am trying to get everything back in order now. Hopefully, well, I haven't gone too bad. When I went to the dentist, of course, the hygienist asks, have you been flossing? Did you lie? Well, well which answer would you like to hear? <laughs> The optimistic one, the, the truthful one, or the, the, the political one? <laughs> and she says, well, what's the difference? I said, the truthful one, not a bit. Yeah. The, the political one, more than I used to, but not as much as I should. <laughs> yeah. And what you want to hear? Of course, every day. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I like uh, floss picks. My yes, I have them as well. I keep, I keep them at work. <laughs> my daughter uses uh, those, but my dentist actually said that for for my because my bottom front teeth are really jacked up, mm -hmm. and I've never been able to really take care of them. He actually said for me a water pick would be much better. Yeah. So, and he's actually been switching patients from floss to water picks because they are they do a better job, and I'm like, you know what? Uh, okay, it maybe if I put out the money for this thing, I will actually use it. I I know you shake your head, and normally I shake my head too, and I go, this is a, is a problem. But lately, with my whole turnaround agenda, which is a weird phrase to use in this state, um, you know, because that's our governor's agenda, which it's failed. But uh, you know, with mine, it has been working. You know, with mine, I actually have uh, actually done what I said, and it's it's one of those things where I want to live longer. <laughs> you know. Yeah, wh with all the articles coming out that flossing doesn't have as much of a benefit as yeah. they tell you. I, I I swear, if I had thought about it, the next time I go when I go back in six months. Somehow I'm on a six-month schedule here for cleanings, and I, 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 that's the first time I in my life. I thought it was that, annual. So did I. When it's people like us it, who never floss, it should be every six months. Every six months. And well, ever since I returned to the dentist I, I after a similar, I mean, yeah. Okay, let's put it this way: when I finally got back to the dentist, it's because I was tired of dealing with the half uh, wisdom tooth that was rotting in the back of my mouth. Because I just kind of just Advil. He took Advil, pain went away. It was fine. So I finally got to the dentist, got that tooth gone, and but yeah, six months. Yes. Yeah. Well. Mine's so bad they're splitting the cleaning into two operations. Well, they, yeah, they were going to try and do that the last time, and they, I was like, "You, 
then they then as they started talking to me they realized they might not get me back for a second round <laughs> yeah so well, they just kept on going and they warned me there's gonna be a lot of blood i said that's fine yeah that's fine i'll go home i'll sleep it off and yeah, yeah wife I, writes in nope it's every six months yeah now well i think i think what it is is it's kind of like eye doctors your insurance pays for once a year but the doctor wants you in once every six months well do you know my insurance dental will pay for two cleanings a year really yeah I, okay but mine won't mine barely covers cleanings at all but there's a max i had so much wrong with my teeth that the second cleaning insurance i hit my my maximum ah. for the year. So the second cleaning is I, I'm responsible 100%. Yeah. That ain't going to happen next year. I'm going to make that perfectly clear. But if I thought about it, I'm printing out the articles <laughs> yeah. next time about flossing. It, have you been flossing? Have you read anything recently? <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said. Don't I, you push this flossing. Don't push the little, don't the be, little pipe cleaner things that you... No. Just say you're just a sh you're just a, sh a shill for big floss. I know your so, deal. I like you, <laughs> but I ain't flossing. <laughs> and don't give me the water pick. Don't tell me the water pick, cause I'll take the water pick home and try and figure out. Okay, if I hook this thing up to a lawnmower engine, <laughs> can I use this to carve wood? <laughs> Uh, yes, we water, water pick. I'm gonna turn this into my own water jet <laughs> carving system. Yeah. Now, Shane, just so you know, there yeah. is a cordless water pick. Yeah. Which you can keep in the shower. Yeah, I know. I saw it. But I'm actually going. You know, like, again, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna listen to the guy with the dental degree. You know, who says this one really works? It is a little pricey, but it works. I'm not buying it through him because he's ten dollars more than Amazon. <laughs> but I'm gonna buy it from Amazon. Uh, but so I went today for the first half of my cleaning, and uh, you know, it, they're they're almost self defeating because they go she. First, they said, okay, so there's three levels of cleaning, right? Uh -huh. And uh, the dentist had originally written me up for the worst level of cleaning. You know, like, you might as well just knock this guy out. It's going to be that bad. Well, she gets in there and she goes, it's not as bad as I thought. So if you want to be numbed up, I'll do it. But I think you can do it without it. Okay, now you've issued me a challenge, lady. Now I can't do the damn... Now it must be like that. <laughs> Even if it hurts, I have to just go through it. And, you know, so, and it wasn't too terrible. Uh, you know, there were a couple of spots that actually did hurt. But, you know, and then she's going through, and at the end, she's like, you're really lucky. <laughs> I don't know how, but you're not, you're, the condition of your mouth isn't nearly as bad from a decay standpoint as what it should be with the amount of crap I scraped off. And I'm like, you don't tell people that. Don't tell them that, hey, you neglected your mouth for all this time, but you're still pretty good. Because <laughs> that's like telling an alcoholic, hey, you can really hold your liquor, you know. <laughs> Like telling an alcoholic, hey, you have the liver of a... Of a teenager. Of an athlete. Yeah. <laughs> you it, know. Really? I'm invincible. <laughs> exactly. I haven't done... I've, I drink a case a day, and that does that's done no damage to my liver. Challenge accepted. <laughs> okay. Right. Let's see exactly what... How... Let's push... <laughs> let's find out where the edge of this envelope is, shall we? Maybe I do have a superpower. <laughs> You know, so I'm liver regeneration man. You know, yes. <laughs> you know but uh, so now they got to schedule me to do the other half and then go in and do all the fillings because they took x-rays the first time I was there. And they, they're like, OK, this is going to be uncomfortable to take all the x-rays because they did a full panel. And I'm like, 
this isn't bad. I never really have a problem with x-rays, even though sometimes a plastic piece does get into your soft tissue a little bit on your mouth. But the, the dent, the, the hygienist or assistant or whatever it is that's doing it going, says, well, you did really good with the x-rays. You know, most people gag or cough or, you know, have a problem with it or slip or whatever. And I'm like, listen, I made your job tough enough. I should at least make taking x-rays, taking pictures easy. All right. <laughs> So listen, when I went to the cheap dentist, like the dental clinic that everybody goes to, because that's the one that's that's about the only one that's in network with my dental coverage. Um, they had the thing where you bit down, and you put your head in the chin, and the, and the camera just one shot. Yep. Yeah. See, I I heard about right. that, but I've never gotten one. So I go back to I go to this dentist, and it's they yeah. bite. And, the, yeah, like yeah. The thing and you know individual bite, films. Bite. You know, so seventeen exposures later. Yeah, yeah. Well, you still have to do both of those. The, the big one where they do the uh, the bite the thing and it goes around your face. They can only do that like every five years or something like that. The 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 bite wings they do those once a year or every well, wh- two years. Is that, wh- why? Because that's what the insurance pays for. Oh, okay. So the insurance company. Okay. Yeah. Why is it? Right. Did you get? To, okay. So it's not that you get too much radiation when they scan your no. face. It's that you know the insurance company won't pony up the money. Yes. See, th- the way it works is the um, dentist does not own that equipment. Yeah. The company who makes it owns the equipment. Every time it gets used. The dentist goes back to the company. Goes, hey, we just took a a uh, X-ray, and then they build the dentist. So it's like renting a copy machine. Yes, but it's more of a franchise thing where yeah. you get a percentage for using the X-ray machine. Mm. Okay. So I think of the eye doctor where they put you in those big. Uh, Do you ever get your eyes checked, Mike? Yeah. I'm not a savage, but yeah. (laughs) Um, I can't tell you. You don't wear glasses. I can't tell. Uh, I'm supposed to wear reading glasses. Yeah. And I have computer glasses if I'm on the computer for too long. In fact, they're sitting right here. But the problem with it, like, you get the, the glare coming back. Yeah. So I don't I don't wear them for the show, but like right. if I'm on if I'm working and I'm doing like a lot of number work and what have you, I do wear them. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, same thing with the eye doctor. They put those big optomat machines where they get a picture of the back of your eye. Mm-hmm. Same thing. They don't actually own those machines. All right. So that's health talk with PTR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see if anybody listening to us doesn't fall asleep. <laughs> um. So. We have several things uh, on the agenda for tonight, but I think probably one of the ones that's going to take uh, most of it is uh, The Rock saying that he would run for president. (laughs) Really? Yeah. There was an interview with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Look, if the race comes down to Trump versus The Rock... Versus Kanye. <laughs> One, we are completely screwed. No, agreed. All right. Two, I think I know who's going to win. You think it's going to be Trump again? Well, it would be Kanye. He didn't get halfway through the election, then cancel it all. I thought maybe he'd go, hold on, hold on, I'm going to let you finish. But Beyonce would be make the best <laughs> first lady all right. of all time. Oh, no, 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 no. He's got beef with Beyonce and Jay-Z again and went off on a whole thing. No, my, yeah, he's he's no, canceled actually, his entire tour because he's yes. afraid that Jay-Z is going to ha- send people to kill him. Oh, okay. So he's going he's, he's gonna, to, you know, I would not be surprised if Kanye doesn't end up in Canada talking about Star Whackers. Oh, okay. oh God. Oh, wow, Kanye. Oh, man. Huh? 
Kanye, Kanye, I can't. Oh, why am I? I'm drawing a blank with the guys with the actor's name. Oh yeah, Randy Quaid? Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid. So, so West Quaid is gonna be the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Wow, didn't even think about that. And of course, you know, uh, The Rock is gonna have to join. He's gonna have to run with Kevin Hart. Well, there was a question. They, there was a question. Apparently, those those two can't. They can't do anything without each other anymore. I mean, like, like, you know, the rock, the rock, and and actually, Pebble. he answered that question in this interview. He said Matt Damon would be his running running mate. So, can you imagine a Johnson Damon? Johnson Damon, twenty twenty. Now that's no. that's star power. No, I really. Matt Damon is an. Look, I have an issue with Matt Damon. One, we spent so much money trying to get to rescue this guy. <laughs> I, I could just imagine what the national debt is. Two, he, <laughs> he's, he's all. He's, he's only been about... rescued from three different planets. <laughs> okay, he's all about. Clean water. Well, gun control and what have you, but Good pay for teachers. He's, he's all in. He's all. He's all in all of these movies that promote gun violence, allegedly. Uh, there's a correlation there, maybe, but still, if he was really against gun control or, or wanting gun control and what have you, then just go back to making movies with Ben Affleck. I don't. I I had never heard that he that he wants gun control. But apparently, you found plenty of articles about it. Yes, I did. But you know. So. That came up well. That would suddenly make Jimmy Kimmel the number one talk show at late night. Yeah, so Jimmy Jimmy Kimmel could be Secretary of State. Let's just stop right there, please. Yeah. Stop. Um, Steve Colbert it, could be Secretary of Education. As it is, I really I, I don't like the way that everybody seems to be jumping on it on this whole presidency thing. Just it, it's like the hot topic right now. Okay. You remember? Remember Coney? Yeah. K O N Y? Yeah. All right. Remember Coney 2012, then, right? Yeah. Co yeah. Well, oh, where are the girls? Where are the girls? And then all of a sudden, Coney never even existed or was like. Well, we had Ebola like come in and whatever. take the attention away from Coney. Right. So everybody's on the on this kick about being part of the election and the presidency and this, that. And uh, oh, Mike Pence is here. Let me, let's me let talk shit to him. And, you know. I know, but I will. I'm, can we please? Can, I, we, can we please? Can we please concentrate on what's important, which is the Biden memes? <laughs> the Biden memes. I'm gonna miss these in the worst way. I know. Yes. This is the best part of the entire election, or the entire presidency, uh, is the Biden. And why did they why? wait till now? Exactly. I exactly. Mean, they are. They are so funny, and we put some of them up on our Facebook page. And if you don't know what we're talking about, just look up Obama-Biden meme on Google, and you will be you will you will have lots to laugh about. Do yourself a favor. Don't it, don't do don't look it up if you have something to do <laughs> that day, because yeah. <laughs> there are thousands of them, and you will you will get addicted. Yes, agreed. Trying trying to pick your favorite one. I mean. Um, now, Thanksgiving is this week. As we all know, we are going to get really fat on turkey. Now, we're not the only ones, obviously, that are celebrating Thanksgiving. Uh, weirdly enough, it's not celebrated on in many other countries. I don't know why. Well, the other countries celebrate it just on the same date we use. Okay. Uh, did anyone see, and I think every year a story like this comes out. But CBS News reports a grandma, a young-looking grandma actually, accidentally texts a random teen Thanksgiving plans. 
and then turns around and invites them anyway. This story is a uh, a fairly, I would say, suburban white woman who uh, who invited a uh, well, it's a it's a black man. I'm not going to give any indication about what he is, but the the text starts out. Uh, you know, hey, uh, text him the plans for, for Thanksgiving and says, you not my grandma, can I still get a plate, though? And she replies back, of course you can. That's what grandmas do. We feed everyone. So, you not my grandma, can I still so this Phoenix area woman invited a... Uh, <laughs> Of course he okay. did. Uh, of course, before that exchange, uh, he asked for a picture of the grandma <laughs> because he's like all of us who get a strange text from somebody. Because I've done this, you know, someone someone accidentally texts you, you don't know who they are, and so you you say, hey, can I get a fresh pic for my contacts or something like that, just to see who they are. Mike, you've never done that. No. No. Oh, you, you should make try. it sound like my number's out there. Well, I, my number's not out there either, but I do get the random wrong number text sometimes. That's never happened to you? No. Oh. I'm not that lucky. So, uh, so yeah. So this story then went kind of viral because that's what stories do now. And, uh, you know, so now he's got... He's got Thanksgiving plans with this white woman. <laughs> Maybe she's got, you know, a cool daughter that he can hook up with or something. I don't know. But it's a neat, it's a neat little story. And like I said, I think we have one of these every year. I just, for your information, um, at least seven other countries have Thanksgiving. Ah, okay. They're just, whether they call it Thanksgiving or just as a harvest holiday, they're kind of scattered around. Even, even Japan. Um, the other thing that we have to talk about tonight, before we get into the the real meat and potatoes of the show, is, um, let's see here. Well, actually, we did all that. Yep, we did all those. Oh, did we talk about the teen who's pregnant with Jesus? I, there's lots of those down in uh, Mexico. No, <laughs> this is not a Mexican. Oh! No, no. We d- Go ahead. With the holidays just around the corner, Christians everywhere are preparing for the birth of baby Jesus, but one teen is preparing in a very real way. Haley 19 appeared on the Dr. Phil show. So you know this is no no regular pregnancy. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I actually see this? All right. I- she says there is no what if I am pregnant. Uh, I am pregnant, and it is Jesus. The teen's mom, Chrissy, considers Haley both delusional and a compulsive liar. <laughs> <laughs> Though her family and friends and even church pastor says she'll prou- she's probably just getting fat. <laughs> yeah, I saw this one, and she told the doctor after revealing the ultrasound. Yeah. They did an ultrasound, found she- nothing. 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 <laughs> but she firmly believes... She's the Immaculate Conception. No. No? That is not the Immaculate Conception. Okay. Give me the right words. There is no right words. It's just... Okay. Immaculate Conception is the Catholic concept that Mary herself was born without sin. Oh, okay. Wrong one. Sorry. You are correct. (laughs) Which nobody cares about other than Catholics. Okay. Everybody else goes... Why does that have such a cool name? Yeah, I don't know. Because it's... I mean, The Last Supper could have used a f- jazzier name, really. Yeah. I mean, uh, what, what, what's that? Oh, we were having supper. Ooh, what's special about it? Well, that was the last one we had with Jesus. Oh, okay. Well, let's call it The Last Supper. Why don't we call it, like, The Stupendous Supper or, like, The, the Goings Out's Big Deal, you know? 
Or the Magnificent Supper. Nope. Last Supper it is. That's, you know, they couldn't yeah. use a great name for that. Yeah, all those, all those terms you just said really don't yep. actually fit the uh, event that well. I mean, it wasn't that great of a supper. Well, uh, it looked pretty cool in the painting. I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, all I got is a painting to go from. There wasn't no Polaroid at that time, so I imagine they had to stand still for a long time. Food probably got cold. That painting had as, about, as much to do with what actually happened as the Da Vinci Code had to do with anything. Well, I haven't learned Da Vinci Code yet. I'm still stuck on C-sharp. I'll just, just make it up. Okay. Just type some random stuff in your keyboard, and you've just learned Da Vinci Code. Sweet. That's your programmer humor. All right. <laughs> oh. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. To the most important thing of the evening, really. I think we have to tackle this head on. I let everyone down because the death pool entry form is not quite ready. I said on the last show it would be ready by this show. You're quite adamant that, about that. I know. It's okay. You had full mouth reconstruction. <laughs> yes. It's okay. Yes. Yes. I uh, think that's grounds for being a little late. But All right. And only one week. But I did... But I do have it. This was not an easy task. One, because I had to completely rebuild everything. The module that I was using to gather the entries don't work no more. So I had to completely rebuild after I figured out how to get your most recent five picks that hadn't died yet. And that sounds easy. It's not. <laughs> It is not easy at all. No, that, that's why there's an entire profession, the profession that both of us have, yes. dealing with doing just that. Yeah. So, but when you do get an email from us, which will probably be sometime either tomorrow night or Wednesday, uh, it will include a link. You click on that link, you will go to a form. Guess what? That form is automatically going to fill in your name, the name you want next to your pics, so your display name, your email address. It will also fill in for you the last five people that haven't died that you picked, be them from this year or from previous years. And it'll go from the order of most recent pick to oldest pick. Um, and then all you have to do is put in the little CAPTCHA code and hit update unless you want to make changes. It's going to be that cool. That's what we're doing. So, for example, uh, Bill, this year, picked Joey Feek, uh, Glenn Campbell, Fidel Castro, Billy Graham, and Jaja Gabor. Well, Joey Feek passed away. We all know that. So, Glenn, Fidel, Billy, and Jaja will all be populated in one through four. And then... If Bill played in last in 2014 or 2015 rather, it will grab the first pick that didn't die in 2015 from him, and it'll fill in the empty slot. That is what I was spending a lot of time on, and it does all that based off your email address. So your email address had to have matched from year to year to year. So Mike, you and I will have at least you know. Actually, I think you have two of them that are going to, you know, roll forward. Or, obviously, once those are filled in, you can delete them all and put in brand new ones. We're just doing this to help you out. Wow, this is getting very complex. Okay. Um, all right, so I have well, a couple I, of questions. I did this for almost a selfish reason. I did this to help spelling mistakes. Okay. Because a lot of people didn't know how to spell celebrity names last year. So I ended up going through and correcting spelling. Uh, so by pre-filling in some names, maybe I make it a little easier on myself. Okay. So a couple of questions. Yes. So last year, we closed the pool on January 4th, 2016, which was our first show of the new year. So are we closing it on January 2nd this year? We can do that. We can close it on January 2nd. 
Okay. Because we will then announce what our picks were. And at that, uh, when we go live, that's when all the picks will then be shown to the audience. Okay. So, guys, when you, when you do your pick... Um, then you don't expect to see them on the pages because they're not going to be shown until January 2nd. And we do that so that nobody can copy off of you. All right. Um, All right. So, so, yeah. So now I would like to just run through the rules and see if we need to change. Just high level. Yes. Okay. Th again, this is All an right. annual tradition. Yes. Going through the rules, making sure everyone knows all of the fine details of the competition. Now, I just noticed before we get to this that there was a typo last year. Yes. And I want to point it out to make sure that we don't duplicate the typo. Okay. In the tie rules, yes, it says 2015. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you're probably going to do a search replace. Yeah, we'll fix it. That wouldn't catch that. Okay. Okay. So, well, I will. So okay. let me read the disclaimer real quick just so that everybody knows. Please do. This contest is a game, plain and simple. By picking names, we are not wishing death upon anyone, nor are we trying to make light of people dying. Death is a natural event and beyond anyone's control. However, we deal with death uh, in the, uh, we however deal with death uh, with this event by laughing rather than crying how you choose to deal with your emotions is your business just don't bitch about how we deal with ours or how our listeners deal with theirs so that's our disclaimer remember when you're passing out a link for referrals tell people this is just a game we're not wishing ill on anyone. All right? This is just a fun little game. That's not meant to discourage you from handing these out because, as you'll find out, because I think bonus points are described here, um, you know, we will, uh, you know, you will be rewarded for getting people to sign up. All right, Mike, you want to start us off with rule number one? Okay, rule number one. Celebrity is defined as a person who lives their life in the public domain, such as a sportsman, entertainer, author, scientist, etc. Characters, i.e. Bart Simpson, Brian Griffin, etc., are not considered celebrities and are not eligible as picks. Picks consisting of multiple people, i.e. Nickelback, are not permitted. Any person submitting an entry that consists of an entity formed by multiple individuals shall have the pick voided without possibility of replacement. Yep. Anyone who provides selections of non-celebrity names will be penalized at the discretion of the host of PTR Radio by applying one of the following penalties. A. Having that pick removed from their list and not being allowed to be replaced. B. Having that pick removed from their list and being allowed to be replaced. C, disqualifying the participant from the contest. Yep. Which has never happened. No. <laughs> we have never disqualified sure. someone, but we always reserve the right to do that. Okay. We might add so. rules to do it after the fact, which is where the Nickelback rule comes from. Yes. Yes. So, no. before we move on to the next rule, do we have any changes or suggestions for rule number one? I think rule number one is fairly straightforward and ironclad. Yeah. Okay. Number two. <coughs> Death row prisoners and quote-unquote winners in quote-unquote right-to-die cases are not allowed. Picks of this nature will have penalties applied as described in section 1.3. A, B, A through C. I think that's good. Uh... To A, Addendum 1, which was added on 12-7 of 2015. Picks that are killed by a government-sanctioned actions will not be awarded points. I think it can be proven yeah. beyond a shadow of a doubt that the pick died of natural causes. Points will be awarded. That was basically the ISIS rule. Yeah, I think, though, that because of the difficulty in determining that someone was actually dead... We probably just need to say anyone, you know. Uh, well, here's here's how. In, upon further discussion, this is how we got around it. Um, the ISIS rule, or the the head of ISIS, um, technically is not living their life in the public domain. They are hiding. 
Okay. Therefore, they are not a celebrity. Okay. That I believe that was how we got around that. Rule number three, murdering one of your picks will result in immediate disqualification. As I say every year, I can't believe we have to have this, but <laughs> yeah. we do. But it is fun to have. Yeah. Rule, rule number four, if a participant's pick is declared legally dead but is brought back to life, no points will be awarded. Yep. Number five, describes how points are awarded. Is... 126 minus the age of deceased equals points awarded. Why 126? Well, because that's the oldest recorded age of a person that we could find. Yep. Oldest, ver chance, oldest verified. Oldest verified. Yes. Oldest verifiable. In the modern era. Because, you know, recorded age Moses. of a person. Not Moses. Moses is already dead, so how could you pick. If you were saying oldest verify, yeah, oldest person we found a record of. Okay. okay. Was it a serious okay, correct? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Um, if by chance you're, oh, there's a typo we mix, missed. Your pick that's a new world record by dying and being older than 126, then you get 50 points. Yep. Otherwise known as the longevity bonus. Yes. Uh, if the deceased was only picked by one participant, a.k.a. a unique pick, the calculated point total will be increased by one point. Yep. We had quite a few of those. 12-9. Mm -hmm. We added, if a pick dies during 2016, but the death is not confirmed or announced until after 12-31-2016, no points will be awarded. This is to prevent any potential... Recalculations yeah. later on. Um, I'm going to come back to the bonus points because okay. I, well, no, actually, no, bonus points are fine. Uh, bonus points will be added to participants' total based on order of deaths calculated as follows. One, total number of deaths equals maximum number of points. Example, if eight picks out of all contestants' entries pass away, the maximum number of bonus points would be eight. First entry whose pick died would get, using above example, eight points. Second entry whose pick died would get seven, so on and so forth. Now, I am going to add, when multiple people pick, pick a death, they all get the points. The points are not divided. Right. Sounds good. I will clean that up later. Put that underline in bold so I know. Okay. Uh, first strike bonus. The first death that results in scoring among the participants will be awarded five bonus points. Yep. Uh, this, this is in addition to any bonus points awarded per section six of the rules. If multiple people have picked the first strike, the five bonus points will be divided equally among them to two decimal places. Yep. Okay. Buzzer beater bonus. Final death occurring in 2017. That results in points being awarded will give a bonus equal to the numeric value of the calendar month in which the death occurred. Which right now means that somebody is getting an 11 point bonus. Yep. Uh, if multiple people have picked the buzzer beater, the bonus points will be divided equally among them to two decimal places. Right now, it is only one person getting 11 points, and it's inconsequential to the standings. Yep. I'm going to skip the referral bonus for a second because I real I'm. We may have to revise this one quite a bit. In the event there is a tie at the end of 2017, yep, there the it following is. will be used as tiebreakers in order. One, winner of the first strike point. Example, player one and player two are tied. Player one's first points were awarded on 214. Player two's first points were awarded on 65. Player one would be the winner. Mm -hmm. Date of second point awarded. See previous example. The third, fourth, fifth, etc. Whichever contestant submitted their picks first would be the winner. Just the current active tiebreaker. Yes. Yes. 
good thing we have that one. <laughs> well, there is no, because there's not going to be a tie right now. Yeah, there is. There's a tie for first place. There is not. Isn't there? No. That's what the website shows. The website's not updated because... Well, I thought that... Well, there's a tie amongst the listeners. Oh, yes, amongst the listeners. That's the only one that point yeah, that matters <laughs> for okay. prizes. Oh, no, that's true. That's, that is true. Well, yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. You're correct. And for my information, is this sorted correctly? Uh, it's, sorted alpha it's sorted by total points and then alphabetically. So not by entry date. So you like entry date would be useful. Okay. So that we could look at this and say who's winning, because we don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, that's not that. Bill's winning, I can tell you that. I remember I looked into this the other day. As of right now. And he put in pretty close to the end of entry. Yes. Yes. Bill. Although yeah, they both have a fine crop of other people who might die. Bill's actually, is yes. better. This is true. Well, I don't know, Amy Marshall was Charlie Sheen. You never know. No, uh, Charlie Sheen could die at any point. Yeah, and at that point, she would probably vault into the lead. All right, so prizes. Uh, we already got the, the, the box of randomness, and First Strike is getting a random item furnished by one of our sponsors. Yes. And we already figured out that when that the pool closes on January second, twenty seventeen, at six p.m. Central Standard Time, which is the date of the first show of twenty seventeen. Yes. All right. So the bonus points. All right. I'm sorry. Referral bonus. Yes. This is how it currently reads. <clears throat> referral bonus. Every new person that a listener gets to participate in 2016 Death Pool will earn you one additional point to be added to your final score. New is defined as any person who has not participated in the Death Pool in 2014 or 2015. This would now be 2016 as well if we keep this the same. Right. New participants must provide the email address that was used to enter the death pool in order for points to be awarded. And there's a 10-point limit on the number, number of referral bonus points. I do believe that 10 should remain as a limit. Okay. But the question is the new qualification. Okay. Do we care if it's new or not? Well, I mean, I don't think we're going to get a whole lot of returns because everyone is going to get their own individual link sent to them. And so, you know, for someone who's already played to refer somebody else who's already played, it doesn't do either one of them any good. Well, it does one person good, but it doesn't do any of the other ones any good. Um, now, here is the reason I ask. Yep. We do have some people that participate that may hold favor with quite a few other listeners. And I could see them pushing pushing out to maximize their points. Okay. <coughs> Dave. <coughs> Dave. Just sorry. Same. Right. Yeah. So, I don't know if we care whether it's new or not, if we just base it off the referral code. Okay. You know what? I don't care if it's new or not. I just want people to play. Yeah. So, I would be okay with getting rid of that first line, getting rid of the new, and actually... I can I can rework the second one to say um, participants must use the referral link in order to receive referral points. And that takes because really the email address doesn't help anything because the way I've done this. And, okay, and we don't care about the email address. It's just right. it's going to be based off of referral now, codes. I am half tempted to change if we think someone may get more than 10 people. 
Uh, I'm, uh, I'm half tempted to do two things. One, I'm half tempted to change it from one point to two points, and I'm half tempted to change it from 10 points to 20 points so that there's more of an encouragement to get those bonus points. Now that means that they're still only referring 10 folks, but I don't know. Tw a 20 point difference is a lot. Yeah, that's, that's I, I'm much. afraid of skewing it too much. I mean, what is the right. minimum of my points you can get from someone dying? Uh, is it one? Well, the low, <laughs> the lowest points right now. And really, the whole the whole thing is, I want people, I I, I want okay. people to to participate. Lupita Tovar yeah. was actually the lowest point total, calculated point total, and that was twenty point seven at the time of her death. Okay. Okay. So. All right, so what about this? What if, how about we split the difference? We just say one point for each additional and we say up to 12. That's fine. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're going to stay at one point and we'll go up to 12. And then I think, because we really do want people to reach out and yes. get other people involved. And I want to reward those folks for doing that outreach effort for us. Yes, as long as they're real people. As long as they're real people. They have to be real people. You know, and trust me, we have ways. All right, so you know, yeah. If you have a Facebook account you've created for your dog, so that you have um, another account to play games with on your phone and give each other stuff, your your dog cannot enter the uh, death pool. Yeah. So you know, but I think that's I think that's good. So I think right, so I think those are all good run through here sure I will I'm, we'll clean up the formatting well yeah and then just send me the new version and I'll get that updated get rid of the addendum dates as they were added previous years uh, all right uh, yeah yeah I'll, I'll probably send it to you just whenever. So I think that takes care of that takes care of the death pool as far as now. the rules. And like I said, again, this is a game. This is just meant to be fun and something different. Uh, and it's a long, it's our long running thing. So we really need your help in getting this out there and getting folks involved. Um, you know, so we look we look forward to you guys helping us out with that. Uh, we're we're doing oh. we're constantly helping, you know, increasing this so that you guys can can enjoy it and have fun with it. Did we want to put a time limit on how long before somebody the entrant responds back to us to do with their address for the box of crap? Oh yeah, uh, put uh, put it on there that prices must be claimed within uh, 30 days. Okay. Yep, just add prices must be claimed within 30 days, otherwise they're forfeited. Within 30 days of notification. Yep. Do we want to forfeit, or do you actually want to start what, going down the list? Going down the list. No, I'm not going through that bullshit. <laughs> well, see, if, if, we, if we gave it a shorter amount of time, we could do that. <laughs> no. No, 30, 30 days, the winner gets it. It's it's all it's the, you know mostly the most of this is bragging rights although there is some cool stuff in the box mm. I started getting the box put together. Here, prize will be forfeit and added to the following year's prize pri prize package. Next awarded PTR box of random awesomeness. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a there's a lot of stuff going on there, <laughs> and I was starting to you know really look at what's involved in the box. I have, I'm my box is overflowing right now. All right, and that's before Colin brings his stuff in, and we send it to Mike, and he adds his stuff in. You know, 
I have lots of stuff to put into this here. Yeah. Because I actually forgot I have some cool stuff to add to. Yeah. I mean, this is like, a really good. I like, have lots I don't, of loot crates, and I need to get rid of some of the stuff. Like, I don't know if I mentioned that, you know, I have the Domo thumb drive, but I also, I, I've been collecting thumb drives. <laughs> so, whatever it is, you're going to be able to power a small <laughs> server with the amount of thumb drives you're going to get. You're just going to need a, ma a USB hub that is more massive than the computer itself. And as we as we showed last week, you'll get the bug zapping racket. You know, which is just hours of fun, really. You know, my stepson said, "Why are you going to give that away? We could have so much fun with that." Um, you know. And I'm like, he's like, you could just take the guard off and we could go around on Christmas. Just so I'm not, everybody. <laughs> I'm not sure which one you'll get. You might get red. <laughs> you might get black. <laughs> or you might get the pig. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. It, I guess it depends on who wins. Yeah. If, if a female wins, I'm not sending the pig because then I'm going to get sued. Yeah. About all I could say. Yeah. So, and we could also put in any rejected hats. <laughs> a lot of hats. <laughs> and if a hat comes in and Mike can't figure out what to do with it, we'll put it. Oh in no! There. I'll figure something no, out. No, Mike's got to figure out what to do with it. Every, I I promise on the air right now. I promise every hat will will be used at least once. Yeah. And then we will vote at the end of that show whether. It continues or not, and if not, then it'll be signed and added to to the box for next, the next year. Box, the next box. Yep. Yep. So, and that's the thing is, on the last one, I don't think we got pictures of the the winner. Well, one the last box we couldn't send out because we never got a reply back. The previous one, I don't think we got pictures of the winner. I think the only the first box did we really get pictures of the winner unboxing the box. And that's what we, your part of this winning is you well, send us pictures of you unboxing it. We had. Because in 2014. We talked about this. Because, okay. Oh, uh, no, no, no. That's right. Big Sal didn't win for. Right. Deathful. He won for 100 followers. Right. So, you know. That's your part of this equation. You in the box, you take pictures with the box. And you show us all. Everybody's out there with these loot crates going, look what I got, look what I got. It's not nearly as cool as our box. I'm telling you right now, our box is awesome. At least it has more stuff in it. Everybody wants to be in our box. It's not nearly as cool. So, that's that. Now... And now, on the fabulous internet, yeah. ETR Radio with Shaggy, our box. <laughs> Everyone wants to get in our box. Uh, so. I won't say any more because I don't want it to backfire on me. <laughs> uh, now, the other thing that we are doing tonight is, uh, well, actually, uh, we probably need to take a quick break, don't we? Uh, Perhaps. Well, give me just one second to queue up a quick break and uh, we'll take a quick break and then we will be back in fact we'll be back in just a few everyone please stay tuned when we come back we're going to talk about tv shows because we don't have a movie review this week so we're going to go and talk about what's on the boob tube so everybody stay tuned we'll be right back in just a few you're listening to ptr radio here on the fabulous entire web <laughs> And now, back to PTR Radio with Mike the Ape Man. Mike the Ape Man. My mother had one of those Euro Steelers, and I swear to God, she tried to Euro Steal everything. I was afraid to push my pants, afraid she'd try and Euro Steal my dick. I swear to God, she <laughs> fucking used that thing on everything. PTR Radio. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back here on the Intel Web, hour number two of the show. Mike, it's just an intro kind of day for you. And yeah, that's fine. 
Hey, it, at least it wasn't the same one. That's right, and because I cursed in that on recording, I'm gonna have to get another tin of beans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not kidding. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh! You are running out of beans. Oh, that's, that's no good. There's only maybe two dozen left in here. <laughs> that might not even last you a whole show some nights. So. Do another 10-day relationship challenge <laughs> segment, yeah. All right. Um, so, we've got... Uh, to talk about since we since this is a short week for us and uh and we're not doing um a movie review this week which i almost could because i did i did uh i did watch a couple movies this week but i they were all current stuff yeah i finally got to watch uh civil war Oh, yeah. Uh, Avengers. Captain America Civil yeah, Captain War. America. Yeah, that's it. Finally got to watch that today while I was laying down in pain. Uh, and then uh, then the other night, oh, and then yesterday, I finally got to watch Star Trek Beyond. So. Yeah, I, I just saw that, too. I was not sure. I'm still not sure what was Beyond about it. I'm not sure if I liked it or not. I mean, it was okay. But. Anyway, I've got a few other movies in my queue to watch. Uh, but the big news that Mike's going to hate is Friday, this last Friday. Huge event on the Internet. Yes. I don't think you could escape the Internet without knowing what was happening. Let me tell you something. When my Amazon box started showing up instead of that, that lovely Prime tape that I'm so used to seeing, started having a logo for the Grand Tour. I, I, uh, luckily, it wasn't anything breakable because I threw the box. I was like, are you kidding? I kicked the box across the yard. Now, come on, Mike. It's not that bad. It's just one of the most expensive, uh, you know, <laughs> car shows in the world, which oh. is restricted to online streaming only. For the record, uh, a couple of shows ago, you played something... Uh, I think it was an Amazon one with Clarkson. Yeah, for the fire stick. Right, during a break. Right. Yep. So, or, and uh, I was holding up during the break. I was holding up a card. Yep. And uh, I, I put up F. Hammond. Yes. But it was Clarkson speaking. Yes. So I want to apologize for getting that wrong. <laughs> so, um... For those of you that aren't familiar with the Grand Tour, uh, the Grand Tour is the guys from Top Gear. And if you're not familiar with Top Gear, Top Gear was on for 22 series. Uh, depends on if you're counting original Top Gear or... Well, I'm, I'm not. I'm just counting the reboot. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it was 22 or 23, which equates roughly to 12 years, I think. I think it was in, uh, I think it rebooted in 2001, 2002, something like that. 2002. All right. So it, it was on for about uh, anywhere between 13 years uh, with that cast, with uh, James May, Richard Hammond, and Jeremy Clarkson. Now, uh, depending upon uh, which article you read, this show either should have been made or should not have been made because it is rewarding Clarkson for having a bad attitude and, and, and basically being himself. Although in interviews leading up to this, he will, he will gladly admit that he is not the same person he was 18 months ago. He was in a very bad place going through a divorce and, um, you know, it, Alcohol was a problem and a lot of other things. Not to say that yes. he still doesn't drink a lot, but he's not the same person. And um, so the Grand Tour is one of the things I was impressed with, because Colin, you saw this, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And Mike, it was, it was must-see TV for you. <laughs> of course. Uh, you know... You start out, the, the episode's called The Holy Trinity, for those that are looking for it online. You can you can see bits and pieces of it on YouTube, but if you really want to see it, Amazon Prime's the way to go. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, they even lowered the Amazon Prime for an annual subscription down to $75 yeah. for a year. Did they give us a discount for already having it? Uh, no, they didn't give us a discount. I was no. a little bit upset about that, but they did. Um, they did... Uh, 
trying to find out why the hell my phone just dinged. Uh, but they did they did discount it for people that weren't familiar with it, and so your first year is seventy five bucks. Uh, the um, uh, so the the show started off rainy London. And it was Clarkson leaving what I think they they envisioned being the BBC building. It was really his apartment building. And um, Umbrella Up then getting into a taxi with small snippets of news reports saying that he'd been sacked, that his contract hadn't been renewed. Going to the airport, getting on a plane for Los Angeles, and then showing up to an empty uh, garage and a Mustang. Yes, a uh, re- rental. Yeah, rental Mustang. Yes, uh, you know. Obviously, I think it was Enterprise because he uh, had to take the large tag off the rearview mirror. Yeah, you know, because Enterprise has supercharged Mustangs at the ready. I'm sure, because this was a million dollar car. Yeah. Uh, you know, but well, it wasn't a million dollar car, but it was a very expensive car. It was Hertz, I would believe. It, yeah, Hertz does do that. Uh, so then you see him driving d- away. You know, very forlorn look, driving into the desert, and then all of a sudden, he looks into the rearview mirror, and his face lights up, and there on his left is James May, and then he looks to his right, and there's Richard Hammond, and, you know, all is good in the world, and then they're driving through the through the desert, and suddenly they're, they're enveloped in this rolling who's who of automobiles there had to have been a hundred cars in that damn I, thing I, I gotta wonder how the heck they got all those people together because there was everything from classic cars to uh, I believe weird art installations uh, it, it, to everything you could think of Lamborghinis Ferraris Porsches whatever driving through the desert and then they drive into what was you saw art installations and and dancers from Burning Man, although it, they called it Burning Van. Yes, Burning Van. But it was very reminiscent of a Burning Man concert, and you know, and a band on stage playing a, a version of I Can See Clearly Now. Yep. And that that's how they started the show. So it was a ten minute. It was ten minutes of the show where no one said a word. All you had was the background song. And, it, and people are saying it's one of the most moving intros of a show ever. It was uh, beautifully shot. Uh, yeah. I will give it, uh, definitely give them that. The, the, the entire thing was beautiful. It was one of those things where nothing needed to be said because the facial expressions and everything were spot on that, that you were seeing. And it, Mike, I know you're cringing at all this, but coming from someone who loved the show before and seeing this, you were almost going through the emotions with Jeremy in the car. Yeah. You it, know. Was, it was very nice. And then and then the show kicks off in this giant tent filled with Americans and it it was just it was classic Top Gear, although you hesitate to say that because then they will get into trouble. You know, so everyone pointing out all these similarities between Top Gear and this, you have to, you, you know, they were walking a fine line legally well, as the far the as doing this. The difference between Top Gear and Grand Tour is that the Grand Tour were some British people in America doing a car show, where Top Gear is an American in the UK doing a car show. Well, now it is. Now it is. Yes. Now it is. So, I it's really... It's symmetry. Let me tell you this. I like the show so much, I've watched it three times. I, and that's I, the I, first episode. I've only watched it once, but that's because I just haven't gotten to it yet. Yeah. Yeah, I'll watch Librarians next. So, that's the grand tour in a nutshell. If they can continue on this pace... I think they will be just fine. And Jeff Benzos, uh, owner of Amazon, said that the show was very, 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 his words, expensive. (laughs) Uh, He said the boys know what they're worth, and they are worth it. So that was his quote. You know. 
And right now, it's only been released in three countries, I believe. And come December, it will go out to 200 countries. So, that's the Grand Tour in a nutshell. Mike, your thoughts? Uh, I'm willing to give it a shot. Now, I... All right. I... I will I will warn you there is a scene in the first episode which looks forced. <laughs> okay? Uh, even though I love the show, there was one scene which looked forced and looked put on just for Americans with low IQs. Now Colin, do you know what 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 set what piece I'm talking about? Are you talking about the entire piece? I, I'm talking about the there are many things that I could say. Nope, there's you there's, that way. there's one in particular which seemed forced and jammed in there that I didn't think was representative of the guys. It seemed like they were trying to force feed some American humor into the show that didn't need to be there. Is it the American race car driver? No. Oh. I, I will give them that one because they got to do something different and they're going to try out a couple of different things I, he I hear. And, and from what I understand, the guy is a really good race car driver. Yeah. So. I just try, okay, I have no idea which, which thing you're referring to. It's the British Air Force is the best Air Force in the world fight with the audience scene. It was fun. It was, it was beneath them. It was really beneath there them. There's nothing beneath them. All right. Mike, this was a stop. This was the three presenters getting into a purposeful argument with the entire audience and then jump shots to them with bloodied uh, you know blackened eyes and bloodied lips cowering behind the desk which had been knocked over you know uh, different jump cuts varying their statement of the British Air Force is the best Air Force in the world you know all the way down to at the end we can agree the British Air Force is very good <laughs> So, okay. it just seemed forced. That part seemed forced to me. Everything else, I was good with. Everything else, I loved. So. It was still funny, so I liked it. Yeah. Now, moving on from that, I went from that to a show that I had seen one episode of, and then I went and I watched the most recent episode of, which is called Kevin Can Wait. Now, Mike, have you watched this show? I have. And it, it features don't. Kevin James. Yes, and I, I don't know if I have seen the latest one. Was the latest one the food truck, or is that the one that's coming up? Uh, the latest one that I watched was he was trying to, he was a bartender. Okay, all right, so food truck is the next, okay. Okay, so this is a Kevin James uh, uh, show. It's on. It's in its first season. It started back in September nineteenth. Mm -hmm. It's on series. It's on episode nine now, I guess. So it's a little bit into its run. Uh, when I watched the first episode, it was. I think it might have even been the pilot, and I thought, hey, this is an interesting concept. Working wife, retired cop, who's sitting around tr filling his day. Daughter comes home from college with boyfriend that dad can't stand. Uh, you know, and now daughter and, and boyfriend are living with them. The boyfriend is a tech guy who, who's, you know, and so I thought it was, it was a tried and true formula. Let me put it that way. Okay. This is not an original idea. No. Of this, you know, family living together and dealing with that. The different part is retired cop dad trying to deal with retirement, you know, trying to fill his day with stuff to do. So the latest episode I saw, he went out and got a job because he wanted to buy a smoker, the Smokemaster yeah. 4000, which ironically reminded me a lot of Colin, uh, you know. <laughs> Because at one point, the the boyfriend says, I can't eat anymore. I think I'm getting the meat, the meat sweats. Well, that's yes, because, because he, uh, 
He was smoke. He he just got the smoker and he was smoking everything possible. There must have been at least fifty pounds of smoked meat yeah. in the shot. Um, and the the boyfriend is played by his name is Chael. Chael. He is a techie. He's trying to develop an app allegedly, and uh, he's played by the the guy who played Gary on um, Alphas. If you're familiar with that show, the he was the autistic one that could see oh, yeah. the electrical signals, right? That's who plays the son. Yep. I found it interesting that they have already had the Ray Romano cameo, as they always do in a Kevin James show. Um, they've had an Adam Sandler yeah. cameo. Yeah, I, I read about that. I didn't see. Or I shouldn't. I shouldn't call them cameos because they're they're they they play roles. Parts in the show. Um, I can tell you, Kevin Can Wait has extremely good ratings and is pretty much guaranteed to be renewed for next season. I I could see that. Yeah, I. I, I it's it's it like Shaggy said. It is not a new format by any means, but it is entertaining. Yeah, and I think it got a good initial start but a lot of these shows they just fail out of the gate because they people just don't tune in yeah, CBS I mean, pushed the advertising on this heavy you know prior to its premiere and they're still pushing it they're still pushing it but they also gave it the benefit of having the Big Bang Theory as a lead in for the first couple of weeks yeah which, which I, anything's gonna help yeah especially so biggest sitcom on television yeah and i can see that that audience being a crossover audience for them i think the same one that likes the big bang theory is going to like this there's a, there's enough nuanced jokes there that yes. you're going to get it um you know so yeah I, I can definitely see that that working and uh, you know like I said, the first episode I saw was great because it was really, you saw this guy and his group of friends who all retired at the same time. And, and it kind of almost reminds me of my dad. Um, and uh, Kevin James is going, oh, this is going to be great. You know, Monday is going to be golf day and Tuesday is going to be, you know, beer and pizza at the bar while we're watching sports. And Wednesday is going to be go-kart day and Thursday is going to be, you know, he has this plan for what his retirement is going to be like with his buddies. And then they have their first day, and it turns out he he reveals this plan to them, and one guy's like, "Oh, I can't. I gotta pick up the daughter from this." Another guy's like, "Oh, I can't do that. I'm with the PTA on this day." And suddenly now, what he thought was his was his guy crew, you know, falls apart, and he has to try and fill his day. And they still have softball league and stuff, but in general, you know, he finds out that it's not. It's it's not the boys' club of retirement. But there was also, if you recall, from the pilot, he was going to rent out that room in the garage. Yes, that was going to be that was going to bring, that was right. That would allow him to do all of this stuff. And the fact that that his daughter and boyfriend are living, or fi boyfriend or fiance. Uh, I thought it was still boyfriend, but it could it be fiance, think. and I could be wrong. Uh, either way, they're living in sin in the garage, rent free. Uh, so, so uh, just to continue on CBS. Yep. So uh, there's another sitcom to start on CBS called Great Indoors. Have either of you watched that one? I have not. I it's. Have not. I've watched the first two episodes, and I've decided I'm not going to continue watching. Uh, it's um, Mike Gibbons is the program creator. Yeah. Uh, uh, and according to Joe, Joe McHale is the lead yeah. in that, right? Yes. Yeah. It also has uh, Stephen Fry. But there isn't enough Stephen Fry because he's definitely the smart, the funniest person on the show. And he just kind of comes in every so often. What do you mean, McLovin is not carrying the show? Christopher Mintz Platts, he's not, he's not able to carry the show. Well, it's only four episodes in. 
and according to this, here's the synopsis. Jack loves his job traveling around the world as an adventure writer for Outdoor Limits, but in an announcement from the magazine's charismatic founder, Roland abruptly brings his globetrotting days to a halt. Jack's new assignment at the now web-only publication keeps him chained to a desk as he supervises a team of millennial writers, including tech nerd Clark, social media expert Emma, hipster lumberjack Mason, who spends minimal time outside, and Roland's daughter, Brooke, who coddles the rest of the staff. Jack gets help understanding the 20-somethings from his best friend, Eddie, who runs the local dive bar. Yeah, so basically it's, let's make fun of millennials, who seems to be the entire premise of the show, combined with, oh, let's make fun of the person trying to understand social media who's been spending his time climbing mountains before. Uh, it gets it got really old for me really fast. I bet. Yeah. Um, other new shows on CBS. Uh, oh, uh, Man with a Plan. Okay. Seems to be doing okay. That's the new. Uh, um, let's talk about that one. So, Man with a Plan is Matt LeBlanc. Yep. All right. And I actually watched that one. That this is another one where I watched an episode a long time ago, and then I just to get ready for mm-hmm. this show, I watched the most recent one, and. You know, I was, I was, this is kind of the same formula of stay at home dad. Um, you know, this reminds me a little bit of who's the boss uh, <laughs> because it was his wife went back to work, so he decided to stay at home and take care of the kids. Uh, you know, but he was never at home before. He was the one out working, so he doesn't know how to take care of the kids. There's three kids involved here, ranging in ages. Um, You know, the first episode I saw was, like, his first day with the kids. So, again, it was probably the pilot. And the most recent episode that I just saw was less kids, more dealing with his wife. And this one happened to have, um, it wasn't Norm MacDonald, who was, uh, who was, uh, it was someone from the SNL crowd. It was actually... He's also been on a commercial. Um, Kevin Nealon, that's who it was. Kevin Nealon was on it, and uh, oh they, yes, 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 yes. And they were trying to make his garage into a man cave by dealing with his wife's hoarding issues, which I could relate to. Um, you know, where he where he thought that maybe he would he accidentally threw out her wedding dress. And it turns out that she thought she knew where her wedding dress was, but it really wasn't there either. And then it's found at the end of the episode. But this this one, I don't know. Like, for some reason, anything with Matt LeBlanc, LeBlanc now, he, it's just something about him. Like, I, And I'm not even referring to Top Gear. I'm just talking about any TV show other than Friends. I have trouble watching him. This one, really do. Have you tried watching this one? I have not yet. All right. But this one you might give it a chance because he actually does a pretty good job here. He he really um he he really reminds me of a lot of the other TV dads. He does a good job there. Um you know, and I I think he did I think this one is probably doing okay but not great. Is that what you said, Colin? Uh, no, um, man with a plan. Yeah, it's likely to be renewed. Likely to be renewed. Yeah. So as is great indoors. Yeah. So well, when there's no accounting for taste in the great indoors, but you know this one, I think it was pretty good. Uh, again, I, it's only got a 21% on Rotten Tomatoes, 6.5 out of 10 on IMDb, 7.6 out of 10 on TV.com, but I didn't. It's not a bad show. It's a show I'd watch, but am I? Is it going to be appointment viewing for me? Probably not. Uh, you know, it's one of these that I, I won't make it. I If it records on prime my primetime DVR and I'm sick, I'll watch it. So but. to finish off CBS, we'll yeah. bookend two dramas with two different uh, results. Okay. So first is Bull. All right. Now this is the... Michael Weatherly, that the part. new Michael Weatherly one, which I have not seen, but I heard it was not doing very well. No, it's I've s- it will be renewed. It's extremely good ratings. Okay, because I really? thought that they were having trouble. Nope. I I watched parts of it. I've I'd never watched a full episode, but I've seen parts of it, and I I don't know. 
I've I'm, watched I'm almost surprised every episode. it's doing so well, but... Well, it, it's, it's, it's perched just between the two NCISs. It's almost impossible for it to do badly, which is why its ratings are great. So, so until, they, until they move it to a different time slot, it'll be safe. If they move it to another time slot, then going it's to it. questionable. CBS loves Michael Weatherly. Okay. They're going to well, keep it exactly okay. where it is. To give you an idea, I loved Michael Weatherly too. And so I went, when we when NCIS first came out, my wife's like, oh, I like him. We should see if he's in any movies and we can, we can get him. And that was back when I was still doing Netflix DVDs. And I found a Michael Weatherly movie. And I thought, oh, this will be great. He's so charismatic. It'll be a wonderful movie. Five minutes in the movie, he's screaming. Crushing someone's skull in a car door. I don't even know he's been in the movie. I knew he was yeah. in Dark Angel. Yeah. I would um, like to. I just want to say I'm trying to go to websites to pull up some material here. If you're going to put up a, 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 a all over ad that covers the entire web page and you don't put an X anywhere to close the ad. Yeah. <laughs> So the opposite end is Pure Genius, uh, uh, which is a medical show where a um, you know Elon Musk type person decides to create a hospital, and this one will almost definitely be canceled. In fact, I believe it's already been I cut off. Saw the preview for that. That's the one where the creator of the hospital is dying of a disease and so he brings in a specialist tells him that he has a grant to cure this one patient that's in a wheelchair mm -hmm. who has the same disease yeah i did not see a whole lot of future for that one now uh i almost forgot one of the big um old shows brought back yep yeah I've never. oh now, MacGyver is likely to be renewed. It's actually doing pretty good ratings considering it's on Friday. Now, I have not watched that. I downloaded the first episode. Mm -hmm. I have not watched it yet. I'm not sure I want to watch it. I've be watched it. It, it. It's good. Because it's I not have... Great. It's not great. I've been, I am, I'm finishing rewatching all of the original MacGyvers before I ever give it a shot. Because I was afraid of ruining my childhood, oh. so I had held off watching MacGyver. Turns out, it's not going to ruin your childhood. Your childhood will stay intact. You just need to have happy thoughts about what your childhood was like when you're watching it. Alright? Don't let cynicism and the real world get in the way of your childhood. <laughs> Alright? Just remember... Matt can fix anything. Yep, they still can. Yep, he still doesn't use a gun. Okay, that's one thing they could have. That's one way they could have ruined it. Yeah, he still narrates his. Uh, you know, my grandfather told me or whatever, etc. Uh huh. Um, now Jack is in every episode instead of an occasional uh, fun thing. Uh, there is more than one person in every single episode. Yeah, I don't know that I like that. Uh, but uh, Murdoch did appear in this last week's episode. A new Murdoch? Yes. Okay. I've seen uh, pictures of the old Murdoch. I, I don't think uh, that... Well, have you seen yeah. pictures of, Mag of, of Richard Dean Anderson? He doesn't look like MacGyver anymore either. Well, there's a difference That's between right. looking like your old self and looking like, oh, I should have had him on the death pool. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. So, so that's uh, CBS. All right. So, um, I have no idea what the NBC shows are. Ah. Uh, let's see here. It's, it says Blacklist. The vo well, maybe, maybe not. But the big one on NBC is This Is Us, which is the one that, if you're watching NBC, chances are you're watching a commercial for This Is Us. Yes. What um, about Timeless? Is it any good? I don't like it. You don't like it? I don't like it. It seems like other people do. It's got 84% on Rotten Tomatoes. Its ratings are getting pretty bad, though, so I don't think it has a future. Okay. Uh, the problem with yeah, Timeless is it's just I don't I don't like it. Mike? Well, I was going to say, Colin, if you don't like it and it's a time travel show, then I'm not going to watch it. But I'm looking I'm looking at the year-to-year -year change for a lot of these shows on NBC, the scripted shows. Uh-huh. And everything is down. 
what I look at is uh, tvgrimreaper.com. It's the guy who used to be on um, uh, TV by the numbers. He actually uh, just he, he doesn't care about the quality of the shows. He just okay. goes off of the ratings versus the other shows on the same network and what days and times that they're at. Um, and the thing, okay, so here's my problem with Timeless. Timeless is a time travel show. Yes. You would think I would like time travel shows. Yeah. Okay. So, history is changed in the very first episode. Okay. That might be fun. Okay. The problem is they make it very clear in the first episode that the timeline of the world they started with is the correct timeline. If they had started with a world where everything was messed up, then I could have some fun watching the show to see how things get tweaked in the past, and that might make the things in the, f in the current day look, seem more like our current world. But all they're doing is making things not like our current world, which kind of leaves me kind of watching the show going, I'm not sure why, you know, what I'm watching. You already ruined the world in the very first episode. You made it clear you can't change it again. So how are they, how am I supposed to stay interested in the possibility of them fixing things? It's already broken. So I no longer have any care about the rest of the show. Mm. Um, beyond that, just just bad plot. Just like usual, I do not like stupidity. If I when I'm watching the show and I'm like, wow, that could have been done better by anybody with a brain going, hey, maybe this is a bad idea. So anyway, timeless. Yeah, I, I, I probably am um, by far the minority opinion at the beginning of the show, but looking at the current ratings, um, it's not looking good. Okay. Uh, but another new show, which is the opposite, I loved is The Good Place. Okay, that's uh, Ted Dan Ted Danton. Yeah, and uh, um, uh, what's her name? Oh, Kristen Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell, thank you. That is a good show, and what's really great about it is, it's a very small show. I mean, they have a limited number of episodes. I think they have like, I think it was like twelve or thirteen episodes, something like that. They're only they've already shown all the episodes they're going to for the, for the fall, and then there'll be more episodes in the spring. And that was the plan. They never planned to have any more episodes than that. And because of that, it feels more like a like an English show, you know, where you know, like Faulty Towers, you know, everything is just perfectly balanced. It doesn't feel like they're just drawing things out to get more episodes in. Because, you know, sometimes a few as shows, it's like there's 22 episodes, and there isn't really enough plot to fill in 22 episodes. So you have lots okay. of episodes where just nothing happens. Uh, Gail's writing in, Timeless seems to be joyless. <laughs> <laughs> and I apologize, I hadn't been looking down, so I don't know if nope. when that came in, but I don't know how much of a delay there is. So... So, all right, so moving on, Fox. Is there anything on Fox worth talking about? Um, okay, so let's see. Lethal Weapon. Did is it any good? I watched one episode of it. It's. I liked it. I just haven't got around to watching it anymore. But it is definitely going to be renewed. It. Lethal Weapon is actually not bad if you go in. It's in name the same characters as the movies they're not try it's not trying to be mel gibson and danny glover yeah which i think is good in light of how rush hour did where they tried to be jackie chan and chris tucker and it got canceled after what four episodes yeah well it was so, pretty pitiful well it was but that's but this is this is trying to find its own ground and I think that's why it's doing so well. What, what difference um, was uh, in, I think, in, in Lethal Weapon, um, the original one, it was more like, you know, the older children. This one, he has a brand new kid, which I thought was a, uh, uh, an interesting uh, dynamic to add. Mm. Now, he's uh, a, close to retirement. It's He's been out for a while, and now he's come back. Yeah. Uh, Gail also writes in, uh, Westworld is cool because they're finishing a storyline without a cliffhanger. 
Yeah, and I've heard a lot that's, about that's Westworld. I just I haven't know, got to it yet. I haven't. Uh, I'm not all about those shows. I have less about those shows than I used to be. So let's 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 focus on Fox for a minute yeah, here, because yeah. I'm reading through. I'm looking at this site here. Uh, Rosewood. I wouldn't. I'm not surprised. I've watched it, and it has slowly gone downhill. Add to the fact that the guy has like a limited lifespan anyway and that's the central point of the plot i don't foresee this show lasting too much longer the show is good but i i've seen it go slowly downhill um dream queens i think is just stupid yeah uh pitch pitch has an interesting hook but it's on the fit according to this site it's on the bubble right now yeah, it's kind of like right down the middle. It's it's uh, the rest of the season is going to really be what happens there. If if they basically it has the ability, if they change something about the show that gets people engaged, that it still has a chance. As opposed to something like, like I said, like Rosewood, Scream Queens, Exorcist, they're pretty much fried. Now. What I am surprised looking at this is that Gotham is so highly rated because I, t- I tuned out of Gotham halfway through season two and haven't been oh. able to come back to it. Okay, so here's the important thing about this site. That is, if a show is owned by the network and it already has two seasons, it will definitely get through a third season and probably a fourth season. Just because the show is going to be sold for... For syndication. Syndication. Okay. So Gotham has been set to definitely will be renewed even before the season has started. Ratings have nothing to do with it. Okay. I am surprised the son of Zorn is doing so well. Yeah, that actually like I am... I am as well, but I think that's a lot of the people who like American Dad and, you know, just, so, now, the big, go ahead, well, I I don't know if we had anything else on NBC we want to, no, no, I don't, so, let's, let's jump to ABC, because one of the shows that I started getting into, I, I found out today has actually been canceled. And that's conviction. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't think it was doing that bad. Apparently, I was wrong. <laughs> I would watch conviction just because of uh, it was Haley Atwell, right? Yes. Yeah. I just, uh, I tend not to watch anything on ABC. Well, see, now here's the problem. Okay, so I've got Haley Atwell, who I known from Agent Carter. Uh huh. And Dub Smash. I have on her team, I'm going to say how I know them. I have Mike from the following, also known as Iceman from the X Men movies. I have Beth from Walking Dead. I have the, the, the neighbor or best friend's wife slash ex-wife from King of Queens and I have some dude that I don't know and I have the guy that played Jim Craig in the movie Miracle so I've got a whole bunch of people in this show that I know from other places and I felt like the show was actually just starting to get its legs but what are you going to do? Yeah. Well, I'm actually surprised Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is listed on the fringe here well, it doesn't have that great ratings, and it has enough seasons in the can now that it can be syndicated and sold on Blu-ray, and it's, you know, it's... Although, I, I, I do have to say, you know, it make it does make sense that it's on the bubble now, and they did a last-ditch effort to try and bring in the Ghost Rider uh, saga to try and spike ratings. You know, it, I don't want to say jump the shark, but it's a desperation move. Now the other, yeah. the other one on ABC, which I've heard a lot of talk about, is Designated Survivor. Oh yeah, I just, that I is, just started watching that. I binged it, and yes, yeah, that yes, it it lives up to the hype that everyone is. Because yeah, that that is the ABC show that I watch. Okay, I have, I have not watched that one. So, 
Well, see, I, I don't know if I, I, I may have said this before on the show, but I'll say it again. When this first came up with ads, I was looking at it and I said, that looks fascinating. I would love to watch that show. I just hope they don't make the, uh, the, the Kiefer Sutherland character the bad guy. Uh-huh. I want to actually watch someone who isn't a political person become president. I want, you know, I want a TV show version of Dave. Dave, <laughs> um, without you know, without the the subterfuge of right. pretending to be the president when you're not. And so when I saw an interview of Keith or Sutherland where he said that he actually came up with the idea that his character doesn't even know what the designated survivor was when he was given that position, I was like awesome that means that he cannot be responsible because if he was he obviously would know about the yeah as named survivor and so far it has lived up to that now moving moving on to not the major networks cw uh-huh all right now cw has several shows that i have at least liked um but one of their newest shows i kept seeing it on my Netflix account going, hey, you may like the show. Hey, you may like the show. Hey, you may like the show. DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Let, now, let's just let's just say it right now. CW should just change their name to the DC Network. Yeah. Well, because that's all they have that's any good. I, yes. You know what? I would be fine with that. And I really like that show. I loved, I, I binged the first season in a day. All right, I watched it all. And the second season, I'm current, man. I am current. Uh, you know, it was a, it's a really good show. The only bummer that I have, and spoiler for those of you that haven't seen anything, is that they took out one of the lead characters at the beginning of the second season. He's not there anymore. And he was one of my there's, favorites. There's actually... <coughs> Oh, wait, what season? Well, is they on? took actually they took out two of the main characters. I'm sorry. What season is on TV right now? Two. Is that three or two? It's two that's on TV. Yeah. So they took they actually took out one, two, three, four. No, they only took out two. Oh no, I'm sorry. Nope, you are right. You are correct. They did take out four. They killed two. Is what I meant to say. Well, all right. The one's missing. Missing. But uh, even the one that's killed is a comic book, so Yeah, I guess. But <laughs> anybody can come know. back any time. Yeah. So it, it's interesting that it DC looks pretty dead though. Yeah. It's interesting that DC seems to be good at making television. Yeah. They just can't make any movie. They can't make a movie worth a damn? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, I am going to be watching um Batman v Superman. The, I, it's, I, it's on watched my list. That. I watched that last week. Okay. Was not as bad as everybody made it out to be. However, it, it, it seemed to just be a vehicle to lead up to a Justice League movie. I really want to see that. that. That's it. I yeah. want to see the Justice League movie mainly because I want to see the Flash. Yeah, but, but here's here's the thing. Um, I love the Flash TV show, by the way. And according to this, th they can't not make another season of that thing. Oh, yeah, it's like uh, uh, frequency and no tomorrow. They're dead. In fact, I think they're already canceled. Yeah, you know, close to. But yeah, all the all the superhero stuff. That's all good. Now, Mike, uh, Batman versus Superman. My my thing about that thing, uh, about that movie is, leading up to it, I thought the idea of Ben Affleck as Batman was the stupidest thing I ever heard of. I did as well. And then you watch the movie and you realize Ben Affleck as Batman is the only good part about that movie. No, I disagree. Okay. Jeremy Irons as Alfred. Oh, yes, but that's still Batman. What? No, it's a different person. Granted, yes, you can't have saying, Alfred the, without the Batman. Batman but the Batman part of the movie, which I thought was going to be a disaster, turned out to be the good part. Okay, yes. yes. So, yes. Here, here's the thing. Legends of Tomorrow, loved it. I'll stay up to date on that for a while. Supernatural, never bothered with it. Arrow, I watched like three seasons of that, and then I lost interest. Arrow, uh, this season of Arrow has piqued my interest again. Yeah, I need to get caught up and, and, and then watch it. Uh, Supergirl... Never have watched, but it is in my Netflix of, hey, you might be interested in this. 
I, I and, need to watch it again. And I wa- and when I watched the last Legends of Tomorrow, starting tonight and for like three nights, they have a crossover event between Arrow, Supergirl, and The Flash, and Legends of Tomorrow for three nights in a row. Yeah. Well, we have a, we have a new listener that tuned in. I've never seen McKenna's name before. Uh, she says, uh, Supernatural is good, but it should have ended 30 seasons ago. <laughs> Jeez. And I would tend to agree with that. Yes. Yeah. And that is yet more family. Yeah. So <laughs> that's my other sister. <laughs> so uh, I know I know my my daughter watches Supernatural, and she would probably agree. I uh, watched Supernatural for like the first two seasons, but then it just started getting like I can't I can't anymore. Yeah. I, it's one of those it's things where though. I like that the uh, the. Um, Mark Shepard, but I haven't watched Supernatural, so I should probably get around to watching it sometime. Well, and, okay, so uh, TNT just started The Librarian back up last night. Yes, both of us have, have not had a chance to watch it. It's going to be tonight. I'll watch it before I go to bed. Yeah, me too. Um, and I already know it's going to be good. Yeah. I, I already can uh, let me tell you right now. I'm going to recommend Librarians. Yeah, always. My problem is... It's the third season, and so TNT is going to stop making them. This will be the last one. Well, I, how many seasons of leverage did we get? I, I, I can almost guarantee this will be the last season for the librarians. Well, okay, let's... Uh, and it shouldn't be. They should keep going for a long time, but I got a feeling that three is the magic number. I don't, Leverage got five seasons. Well, here's the problem, all right? And TNT has been vocal about this before. When you start the fourth season is when your contracts are up and you have to renegotiate contracts. Uh-huh. And at that point, people want people want more money because the show is successful. All right? And TNT says they don't have the budget to do the second contract go around and pay more money. So they just get new people. So... Well, you still need to keep a couple of people to keep the audience I mean, around. We already know that we're losing a character this season. Do we know that? Yeah. I didn't know that. To Corey and Dean Devlin, we're losing a character. We don't know who, but we're going to be losing a character. I, I, okay. Now, my worry about leverage is they did lose the, the showrunner. Yeah. Because John Rogers moved off. But Dean Devlin himself took over as showrunner. Yeah. So that should be okay. But, yeah, I am looking forward to going home and watching that. Yep. Now, the other show that I've also been watching, uh, a Netflix exclusive, is The Ranch. The yeah. Ranch? The Ranch. Uh, it's a comedy with Ashton Kutcher, Danny Masterson, uh, Sam Elliott, and uh, Deborah Winger. Hmm. I haven't heard of that one. And it's actually... It, they just wrapped the second season. It's actually pretty good. Now, one of the things uh, that I wanted to touch on before was there are a couple of shows that are actually popular, and Shaggy, you kind of brought this up with, like, parked it with uh, Legends of Tomorrow, that I refuse to watch on TV and will only watch when they come online and I binge them. An example was is um, Last Man Standing. Yeah, uh, I have, you know what, I, I, I saw the commercials for that when it was on the air, and now it's on Netflix, and I'm like, I really do like Tim Allen. I should watch that show. I binge watched that after my knee surgery. Mm hmm. That was all I watched. Good. Don't lie. Good show? And it, it, it's funny. I, I like, he has a lot of nods and throwbacks to Home Improvement, but not, not t- anything major. Right. But it's a good show. It, it's worth checking out. See, and I think that's that's the weird thing we're in with television now is a show could be popular after it's been canceled, you know? Yep. Because you've got a generation like us that that do that. You know, we don't we don't watch TV necessarily all the time as it's being developed, as it's being or shown. We're we're so much post post run. Even a, even as it's being aired. 
Yeah. Because now the Nielsen numbers take into account DVR numbers. Yeah. Well, they had to. Because, the, yeah. They, well, that's because so many people, even when shows are on, okay? Kim and I watch Empire, which is another one of Fox's hits. And it comes on at 9 o'clock. We don't start watching until 9.30. Well, yeah, that way you Why? can get through the so commercials. So we have the DVR, de- yeah, we have the DVR delay, and we can zip through. Yeah, I I pay uh, CBS for their app, mm-hmm. so that I can watch CBS shows the day after of no commercials. Yeah. You know what? You are one of the evil ones that actually bought into CBS's thing and gave them the big ego that they could put the new Star Trek on the app only. Hey, if it works. There, don't like it. Yeah, I kind of do like want to see that, but I don't want to pay for the app. <laughs> I'm not paying for the app for one show. That's not going to happen. No, I, and I you, can, you, can, or you can say that, yes, that you can watch the show the next day without commercials and what have you. I could do that with my DVR that I'm already paying for. Yes, but I don't have to fast forward. I, I'll push the button four times. Well, here's my thing is, you know what, I would buy those things like the CBS app and like, you know, Hulu and that kind of stuff if I could dump my my dish. But because channels like Food Network and, you know, the cooking channel and stuff like that don't have those outlets on the digital boxes, they only have it through cable and television and specific, more specifically right now, the Hallmark Network, uh, you know, what, what, doesn't what have about those. What about Sling? You Does Sling have them? No, it doesn't. See, the problem is my wife loves the sh- loves the TV stations that are only supported by the other television stations that you have to buy in a package. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, McKenna writes in Netflix purposely writes their original shows around the concept of binge watching. Yes, and that's why they release them all on one day because they know they're going to yeah. binge watch. House of Cards. Let me just explain. House of Cards was the first show that really got me binge watching. When it comes to Netflix, releasing the whole thing in a day and going through and watching Mm -hmm. because it was planned that way. Now, I don't know if I've ever said this before. And here, big spoiler alert. If you watch House of of Cards, this is a spoiler alert. And if it comes true, please don't kill me. But I have said all along, the way that Frank and Claire Underwood, the main characters, rose to power... From him being a senator to becoming the vice president to becoming the president, and basically they manipulate the whole system. I always said he's not the evil one; she is, and it mirrored how the Clintons were going. He was the president. He, th- but then she started the rise to power, and she was the one killing people. So if she had become president, I was going to say, guarantee you, that next season. Claire Underwood is going to off Frank to become president. I thought you were going to say the evil one right all along. Donald Trump character. <laughs> they just might. <laughs> well, they they no, they do have a Donald Trump character actually, and he, but he could be the one that comes in and runs against somehow in light of Trump, but. Anyway, okay. I'm sorry. Back to regularly scheduled. Discussion. Well, see, and that's where the the Grand Tour is a little bit different because it is weekly put out. Yes. Amazon did something different for once is they didn't do it. It's not bingeable. They're, they're doing weekly releases like a traditional <laughs> TV thing. And that was, uh, I don't know if it was Amazon's idea or if Amazon agreed because it was requested by mm-hmm. the, the, the Grand Tour staff. They didn't want it to be bingeable, and and some of it was because by not making it bingeable, they buy themselves 12 weeks worth of time um, that it's less time that you're without the show because it takes them a while to record the next one. Yes, Mike? I think it's also because it, it's the time of the year. Yeah. This is the time when people will, who have not had Prime before will do the 30-day trial. 
if they released the Grand Tour all at once, it's one less reason for them to stick around. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Right? Whereas if they do it a little bit, you're hooked. Okay, now you're going to let that membership come full circle. Yeah. Probably. And oh, by the way, we did drop it 20 bucks for you for your first year. Yeah. I think it's also, and I get it. It's smart. It's also the case that a lot of what made Top Gear and Grand Tour work is Jeremy Clarkson saying stupid things. You have to put some time in there for people to be mad at him. If you just put it all there at once, then there's just going to be a lot of stupid things he says all blended together into a big 12-hour block, and then you get one week of people mad about it, but they can't really concentrate on a single thing to be mad about, and you lose it all. But if you keep the anger going over 12 weeks, then you get more people watching. Yeah, that's Fair true. Enough. Yeah. All right. Folks, you've been listening to PTR Radio here on the fabulous Intel Web. We're going to be back in two weeks. That's right. We're back on our two-week schedule, so we will be back December 5th. My birthday. Yes, right. It's Colin's Yay. birthday. And guess what? It's another dentist appointment. <laughs> I get to do this twice in pain. Yay. <laughs> I can't believe I scheduled it for that day, but I did. Oh, I suck. You didn't. Yes, I did. It's in my phone. Oh, you said put it on there yet. Okay. It hasn't synced yet. Oh, but I remember putting it in my phone going, oh, that's Colin's birthday. Oh, shit. Uh, so, uh, yes, December 5th, we'll be back. Hopefully, everybody will be in there post turkey coma by then you will have had time to go through our celebrity death pool enter your picks uh, again it's totally up to you guys we need your help getting the word out and getting people signed up we will be taking them through january 2nd but all those emails should be going out tomorrow night or wednesday at the latest that's something for you to do on thanksgiving now uh, we always want to give you guys opportunities and again don't forget about the mike the ape man Instant Hat Impersonation Challenge, or whatever we're calling it. So, you know, that's that's also an opportunity for you to have some fun. As always, check out our Facebook, Twitter, PTR Radio, or our website, PTRRadio.com. I'm not going to forget it this time. Otherwise, you've been listening to PTR Radio. I'm Shaggy. I'm Colin. I am Mike the Ape Man. All right, folks, we're out of here. Stick the fork in the sword. Done. Later. Later.